Hi guys, this is Mr. Pollock Biology for another revision video. Uh, this time it's osmosis and water potential from AQA AS Level Unit 1. This has been requested quite a lot, so I hope it's going to help a lot of you guys out. Let's have a little look at the objectives for this video. Uh, you're going to define osmosis, that's in A level terms. And you're going to understand what this thing called water potential is. You're going to explain what happens to different types of cell in different solutions. And you're going to hopefully be able to apply this to some experimental data. Let's have a little look back at our GCSE osmosis definition, where you learned it's a specific case of diffusion, and it was the movement of water from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration, and this happened across a partially permeable membrane. But what is a partially permeable membrane? Well, it's something that lets certain molecules through, but not others. So in this case, the partially permeable membrane in green separates the two sections here, the left and the right, the sodium ions can't pass through, but the water molecules in blue can. That's basically it. It lets certain things through, uh, but not others. But things can get confusing when we think about concentrations, because an area of high water concentration is a dilute solution, but an area of low water concentration is a concentrated solution. And that gets really, really confusing really, really quickly. To avoid this confusion, we define osmosis in terms of water potential at A level. So let's look at our A-level definition. Osmosis is the passive movement of water from an area of less negative water potential to an area of more negative water potential, and that occurs across a partially permeable membrane. So that word passive just means that there's no energy required for this process, and we'll look at water potential just now. So what is water potential? Basically, it's a measure of how freely water molecules can move. And it has a maximum value of zero in pure water, and it's never ever positive. It's measured in kilopascals, and really if you want to understand water potential fully, I'll put a link in the description for you guys to have a look at. It's really a combination of solute potential and pressure potential that combine together to make this thing called water potential. But for the time being, let's keep it simple. Here's some pure water. It's got a water potential, which is sometimes represented by the Greek letter Psi, which looks like this, and it has a water potential of zero kilopascals. The more solute we add, in this case we've got some sodium, the more negative the water potential becomes. Now I've just assigned some arbitrary values to these. So the pure water will always have a water potential of zero kilopascals. The more water, sorry, the more so solute we add, the more negative the water potential becomes. The real reason behind this is the more solute we add, it acts like there's less free water because the sodium or any ion or any solute will stick water molecules nearby to it and prevent them from moving as freely. So let's imagine we place a couple of cells with different water potentials next to them, next to each other. We've got pure water, saltier water and salty water from the previous example. How will the water move? Well, remember it moves from less negative to more negative water potential. So we're going to move from A to B, because minus 250 is more negative than zero. We're going to move from A to C, because minus 150 is more negative than zero. And we're also going to move from C to B, because minus 250 is more negative than minus 150. The examiner will accept explanations in terms of higher and lower water potential, but I would recommend using more negative and less negative because it really does clear things up. So what happens if we stick some cells in solutions? Let's look at animal cells first, in pure water and a salt solution. If we put animal cells in pure water, water is going to move in because the animal cell has a more negative water potential because of the solutes dissolved in the cytoplasm of that cell. Water's moving in by osmosis, causing the cell to burst. This process is known as osmotic lysis. If we place an animal cell in salt solution, we find that the animal cell has a less negative water potential relative to the solution. Water's therefore going to move out by osmosis, and the cell will shrivel. And this is illustrated quite nicely in this diagram that I stole off of Google Images. Let's look at plant cells next. Pure water and salt solution as before. Now plant cells have a cell wall which allows them to resist osmotic changes a little bit easier. 
So a plant cell has a more negative water potential than pure water. Water will still move in, but this time the cell will swell and become turgid and swollen, and because of that cell wall stopping the bursting. In salt solution, the plant cell will still have a less negative water potential than the solution. Water will move out by osmosis and the cell will shrivel and it will become flaccid. And once again, here's a nice diagram that I poached off the internet. Chances are you're going to be asked to work with data in your exam, usually from aubergines or potatoes, other vegetables are available. Let's imagine that we cut some strips of these veg, stuck them in a variety of different solutions and calculated the change in mass over time, or after a certain amount of time. We plotted our results on a graph. On the y-axis, uh, we have the percentage change in mass. We use percentage change because, you know, all potato cells might be, might be different sizes or it's not really a great idea to just do mass because it's difficult to make a uniform start mass each time. On the x-axis, we've got the solute concentration. We've got to look at a couple of key areas here in green, blue, and red. Green is where, is there, where there is a positive change in mass. It's gained mass. Therefore, cells will become turgid. Red is where there's been a loss of mass because water has moved out by osmosis. Here, the cells will be flaccid. And the key point where the x-axis is crossed, that's where there is no change in mass. And this is where it's in an isotonic solution, where water is moving in and out of the cell at exactly the same rate. An isotonic solution is one that is at the same concentration or the same water potential as the cell itself. And this state here is known as incipient plasmolysis, where water moves in and out at exactly the same rate. Let's summarise this. Osmosis is the passive movement of water from a less negative to a more negative water potential. And this occurs across a partially permeable membrane. Pure water has a water potential of zero kilopascals, and the more solute we add to water, the more negative the water potential becomes. Plant cells can resist osmotic lysis because they have a cell wall. This links really closely to cholera um, and oral rehydration solutions, so keep your eyes peeled for a video in the future. Thanks very much for watching, like, comment and subscribe.